Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Recovery at Powell Church. It's another Thursday, and I'm so excited that you have come to be a part of this worship service another week. And if this is a first, second, third time here, we especially want to welcome you in and let you know if you want to get involved, get more plugged in, uh, just to let us know. And we'd love to connect with you and talk to you more about recovery, our shared groups, and other resources to help you in your journey. My name is Travis Wills, and I am a child of God who has struggled with things like depression, childhood trauma, and of course, a sinful nature. However, my struggles do not define my story. Redemption is my story. And the author of that story, his name is Jesus. Jesus has given me the love, the forgiveness, and the strength that I need daily in my journey toward recovery. We believe that God is the center and the source of our recovery. And so we talk about him often, as well as practical tools like the 12 steps of recovery, as we take one step at a time, each day at a time, toward a life of healing and wholeness that our soul cries out for. We're a ministry that is in no competition whatsoever with any other recovery ministry or group. So AA or NA or Celebrate Recovery, if you're a part of one of those ministries, uh, you do not have to be exclusive to them. As long as they are uh, something that is life-giving and helping you in your journey of recovery, we would love to partner with you as you partner with them as well uh, to live a life of freedom in Jesus Christ. We would also love to have you join one of our open share groups. They're safe, they're anonymous, and right now we're facilitating those through conference calls. So you can actually get to those through numbers that we'll show later on in the service. Uh, toward the end, Jamie will give you some instruction along with those numbers on how to call in and be a part of those groups. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, we learn, recite, and practice the 12 steps of recovery every week together. Uh, these steps, along with their biblical expressions, they lead us closer to who we were meant to be and closer to the one who gave us life. So uh, let's take some time to recite and reflect on these steps and scriptures before we worship together tonight. Say these aloud with me. Step one. We admitted we were powerless over our compulsive behaviors, our addictions, and our losses, that our lives had become unmanageable. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Romans 7, 18. Step two. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Come to me, all you who are struggling hard and carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Step three. We made a decision to turn our will and life over to the care of God as we understood him. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Mark twelve thirty. Step four. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. We must search and examine our ways. We must return to the Lord. Lamentations 3, 40. Step five. We admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. James 5, 16. Step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Romans 12, 1. Step seven, we humbly asked him to remove all our shortcomings. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. James 4, 10. Step 8. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Why do you see the splinter that's in your brother's or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? Matthew 7, 3. Step 9. We made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. When a man or woman commits any sin against anyone else, thus breaking faith with the Lord, that person becomes guilty. Such persons will confess the sin they have done. Numbers 5, 
six through seven. Step 10, we continue to take personal inventory and when we are wrong, promptly admit it. And now, just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him too for each day's problems. Live in vital union with him, Colossians 2, 6. Step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and power to carry that out. Pray continually, give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 through 18. And step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Let's lift our hearts and worship together tonight as we focus our attention and our affections toward Jesus. As we sing through our joy and through our pain, as we thank God and we raise our cares to God, as we sing to his name and sing this out. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the way. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will let you have. Oh, yeah. 
continue to sing to our God who is always faithful, whose love is enduring, whose grace knows no bounds. Just swim in that grace as we sing to his name. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come
still in your hands This is my Jesus Christ who struggles with issues around sexual integrity, codependency, and perfectionism. But thank you, Jesus. Those things no longer define me. Jesus defines me. Um, grateful to be here with you tonight. Grateful, Travis, for your leading us into worship the Father. Thank you for that. Um, and let's just stop right here where we are, um, where we find ourselves right now, and let's go to God in prayer. Would you pray with me, please? Oh, Lord Jesus, we come to you. And Lord, we just bring everything of who we are and, and lay it before you in your presence right now. Our, our worries and anxieties, our fears, our needs. And they are many, Lord. This is just a time like we've never experienced before. Um, and there are many needs and many fears and hopefully there also are joys and, and things that we are grateful for and that all that bundle of who we are, we just come right now and lay at your feet. And we pray that we might know your presence, that we might hear a word from you. Lord, we continue to lift up Brooke and her family to you. We pray for recovery from her surgery and full and complete healing from her cancer and that you meet every need that she and her family have every spiritual need, every emotional need, every physical need, every material need. And Lord, I offer you this time. Please make yourself known to us. Lord, I can't, but you can. So come Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. We're in the second week of our prayer series um, using the acronym PRAY, P-R-A-Y. Um, all this is from a book by Pete Gregg called How to Pray, A Simple Guide for Normal People. And Pete uses that acronym to help us sort of broaden our concept of prayer, P-R-A-Y, pause, rejoice, ask, and yield. Um, and last week, we said that while we seek to broaden this foundation of prayer, we don't want to make it so complicated that we get frustrated and give up. So our three... Um, sort of rules, for lack of a better word, to keep us going are keep it simple, keep it real, and keep it up. Last week, we talked about pausing, and that pausing um, not only helps us come into prayer, but as we pause and still our hearts and minds before God, we are praying that that's a form of prayer, and that we can then move into worship, adoration, rejoicing, praising God as a form of prayer as well. And this week, we'll consider what it means to ask God. Um, and, and we'll talk about it in specifically in this way. Is anything too small to bring to God? Uh, do we worship a God who cares to get involved in the little things? Or do we take care of the little things and we bring only the big things to God? That's what we'll talk about tonight. We'll start off every week by using the Lord's Prayer. This week, we'll look in a different version. It's the one that Pete Gregg uses in the book. So... This is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We'll look today at two different particular parts of the Lord's Prayer. Um, Give us today our daily bread, which is asking for ourselves. And later we'll look at your kingdom come, which is asking on behalf of others. So are we to pray for our simple, basic, everyday needs? Now, that's not a rhetorical question. Obviously, the Lord's Prayer says, give us today our daily bread. But here's the real question. If we just look at our lives, just try to objectively look at how we live, is there evidence that we take everything to God? Or do we actually reserve relying on God for just the big things? Prayer at its most fundamental level is asking God, asking God for help, asking God for what we need. Sometimes just saying, God, do something. And prayer is a nearly automatic response for humans in crisis. Well, that makes sense because you and I are created in the image of God. But if we pray only in the crisis and only involve God in the big things, how does that affect our faith? How many people do you know who receive um, miraculous answers to gigantic prayers on a daily basis? And ask a different way, how many people do you know who pray over the smallest details of life but seem to live out of a great big faith? Or maybe better put, they live out of faith in a great big God. A God who cares for us in our big crises, yes, but also in our everyday needs. One of the people that I go to and I ask them to pray for me, um, we were talking the other day and she said she was sewing some mask and the thread ran out of the bobbin and it came out of the needle and that the part of the sewing machine that would automatically do that was broken. So she had to thread the needle by hand and it was difficult and she became frustrated and she just said, Lord, help me thread this needle, and he did. In her way of life, nothing's too silly to pray about, nothing's too small. She says that that constant prayer is interaction with God that brings her closer to God. Jesus said, give us today our daily bread. And I think in that he's reminding us that his grace comes for today. The recovery principle of living one day at a time comes from Jesus. We see it right here. And I read something about that recently that just stuck with me. The author said we pray for our daily needs and then our wants for tomorrow. And I get to thinking about that and and I believe that to be true. Our needs are for today. And that's what Jesus said he will meet. And if we're praying about something tomorrow, it's still in the category of want because Tomorrow is not yet here. Today is where our daily bread, our needs are found and prayed over and met by Jesus. When Jeremiah was deep in depression and wondering when his dark times would end, he wrote this in Lamentations 3. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. When we pray for the little things, the everyday things, we get to see God's new mercies, his small miracles every day. And that helps us grow in our faith. And it helps us to live in gratitude. Now, I I won't say that you do this, but I know that I often forget what I've prayed for. That's why I have to write them down somewhere um, in my journal or sometimes in my phone. What I realize is when I go back and look at that and I can see how God has answered that prayer, even a very small one, I need to take a moment right then I, I have come to understand and thank him for that and praise him for that. And doing that repeatedly, Paul says, will bring us into transformation. This is what Paul says in Romans 12 too. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. In psychology, they would call this what fires wires. In other words, if you intentionally look back over your prayers 
and you know where God has answered them, no matter how small, and you stop in that moment and praise him and thank him, that will train your brain toward prayer and praise and gratitude. And those repeated interactions with Jesus, Paul says, will lead to a transformed life. God suddenly happens slowly, over time, often over a long time. And Jesus talked many times about how he wanted us to be persistent in prayer. And one of the ways we uh, maintain persistence in prayer is by remembering the smaller everyday prayers that God has already answered. And that gives us faith to keep praying for those bigger things that have yet to come. A friend of mine told me the other day she took a break from work. She's sitting at her desk and she was reading this book by Pete Gregg, How to Pray. And she said she just realized there was something going on in the office in that very time that was just wearing her out, just draining her. And she prayed, Lord, please help. And within 60 seconds, he answered that prayer. And she said that that was a small prayer and that was a small miracle, but I found it so encouraging. And she said, it's in those answered prayers, the small ones that I find the faith and persistence to keep praying for the things that are yet to be answered. And she said, that helps me increase my conscious contact with God, which we see in step 11. So we can pray like that. Um, big prayers and little prayers, both for ourselves and for other people, for individuals and communities and even whole countries. Brooke reminded us recently of the greatest commandment. It's our third step scripture, Mark 12, 30. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. In the very next verse, Jesus says this, and the second is equally important, love your neighbor, as you love yourself. To love others is to earnestly pray for them. We call that kind of prayer intercession. And now intercessory prayer sometimes gets a bad rap because people just carelessly tweet thoughts and prayers without giving much effort to either one. But true intercession is incredibly powerful and mind-blowingly possible. You and I inhabit a certain space. In terms of the Lord's prayer, it's the space between your kingdom come, your will be done, and the reality that we stand in today. Pete Gregg in his book calls it the space between the glory and the dirt. Now, how different might our prayers be if we were absolutely convinced that God hears every word? Our feet in the dirt, yes, but our our hearts and our spirits connected to God in heaven who hears every word. He's with him actually inviting us to be involved in bringing about his kingdom on earth. Oswald Chambers said, prayer does not fit us for the greater works. It is the greater work. You and I can learn to intercede for others more effectively. That's one of the things that Travis and I are going to talk about in our Monday video chat that we'll put up. But for tonight, we'll leave it with this story. One of my extended family members is going through a really difficult time, lots of great big needs. And I was praying for her the other morning and I just thought in my prayers, I thought, Lord, with everything that she's got going on, if I were in her shoes right now, what, what would I want you to do for me? And what I thought was I would, I would just ask to have a good day, just a little bit of a break from all the pressure and the big things that are going on. And so that's what I prayed for, that she would have a good day. And though I wouldn't normally do this, I just texted her and I said, hey, thinking about you, praying for you, praying you'll have a good day today. And she texted back, thanks. Um, then later in that evening, I got a text from her that said, hey, had a good day today. She told me some things that went on that day and not one of them would anybody consider a miracle. Um, not one of them would be a great big thing, but she and I were both encouraged in our faith. And so was that a drop in the bucket? Well, sure, it was a drop in the bucket, but if you put enough drops in the bucket over time, that bucket's gonna fill up and one day it's gonna overflow. 
Our faithfulness grows by praying prayers both great and small for ourselves and for other people. And by praying those prayers in the name of Jesus, according to the character of Jesus and the will of God empowered by the Spirit of God. We are granted the incredible privilege of speaking directly to our Father in heaven. Even the privilege to speak boldly, trusting absolutely in his love for us. And so praying in the name of Jesus is not some magic formula. It's rather submitting our prayers to him in the way of not my will, but yours be done. And we can only really invoke the name of Jesus if our prayers, really our lives, are submitted to him. So as we close tonight, may we all remember the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. And may we bring everything to God in prayer and more enjoy his mercies that are new every day. In the name of Jesus. Um, Travis and I are making a video that'll post money to go along with this message. Just encourage you to check that out, please. And to let us know if you find it helpful, comments you have, um, suggestions you have, things that you've experienced in prayer. Um, we just want to um, post that and see if you find it helpful and hear from you about that. Thank you again for being with us on another Thursday night at Recovery at Powell. We are so glad that you would join us. Hope that you'll follow us on Facebook and keep up with what's going on. We are anxious for the time we can come back into the building in person for worship. Um, and we'll do that as soon as we can do that safely. Thank you for those of you who are able to give. The ministry and work of Recovery at Powell continues. And that would not be possible without your um, grace-filled giving. Thank you. You can give any of three ways. You can give online, you can give through the Church Center app, or you can mail a check to the church. And just ask that you would consider being part of one of our open share groups tonight. Um, we do that by secure conference call. You just call in, say your first name, and you're in the group. Um, the numbers are on the screen. It's, it's just a way that you can be part of a group of people who might share a similar struggle as you, and you can be encouraged as they share their experience, strength, and hope, and you can find a place to share your experience, strength, and hope about whatever's going on with you today. Those groups start tonight at 7.30. And as always, let's close with the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. And now, wherever you are right now and wherever you're going to next, may you go knowing that God is faithful, that God is powerful, and that God loves you. Go in peace.